Yeah, baby. Happy October. <laughs> you be going to Dunkin' Donuts, getting the pumpkin lattes? You into those? Huh? The pumpkin lattes, you be getting those? You into that? <laughs> oh, man. Welcome to the Freedom Cage Podcast, where we lock into a free state of mind each and every pay week on all DSPs, of course. I got my main guy, my ace, my left and my right as week, Sean, better known as Mr. Senor Lee on all your socials. You know. And me, I'm Kenny, man, also known as Ken Kaplick on all those socials. But man, before we get anything started, the month went by pretty fast. Things got a little crazy. But man, Haiti, man, yeah. prayers. Big prayers going out to y'all first and foremost. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, You saw the pictures at the border. It was dudes on horses with whips. And that <sighs> takes me to a very nervous, a very bad place when we look at slavery. Like, when I initially seen the photo... I was curious, like I had a couple questions that went across my head. I was like, is this like an HD photo of what happened back in the 1800s? Um, uh, is this a current photo? Like, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, after man. I know this is a current photo, I'm like, who the fuck is taking a photo of this? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It was so many weird, like, emotions and questions. And just, but then it's 2021. Then it's like fake normal again. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you had people doing, like, the side by side pictures, just like you're saying, of the old times and the you know new times. Like, like don't this look familiar? A little too familiar. Yeah. I ain't like that shit. Like, um, I don't know what the if there is a rescue kind of effort as far as people that are all trying to escape the country due to you know all the regime happening over there. But there has to be something in play. Or no, like wh- I, granted, when you get here, you know, you technically aren't a citizen, so trying to move around is super difficult. But they're not even allowing those that really made it here to stay here now, too. So Yeah, it, it's tricky, man, because I don't know, like, they played a lot of old voice footage of Biden and Kamala Harris's campaign talking about if you are seeking refuge in America, you should be allowed. When you come here, we will welcome you. You'll be good. That's what I heard. Right, and then all of a sudden, fast forward to this, it's like, don't come. Like, I just want to know what agency that was. Right. On horses, nonetheless. No, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and equipped with whips. Yeah. Like, like, you can't just, you know, I assume, like, a, you know, a fire fighter's locker or a, police, a policeman's locker has certain tools of the trade. Like, who are you to have a whip in your locker to go walk out and be like, Absolutely. another day on the job? Absolutely. That's wild. I hope we got, hope we got, hope the whole thing get disbanded, whatever it was. That yeah, was yeah, yeah. The good thing is they moved those people out of the inhumane circumstances that they were. So, awesome. you know, just continued prayers for them, man. Oh, man, happy to hear that. But um, other news for October, though. Cancer Awareness Month, man. Yeah. Um, as you know, football starts with the pink accessories. That's always a quick hint, hint that, you know, it's, a, it's among you. But um, I'm thinking about, like, Nah, let me not say that out loud. I don't want to say it and not do it. But if I do it, I'm going to let you know next show. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, I was thinking of doing a, a fake donation to some cancer-related. Yeah. Um, I've never donated to them before. Mm-hmm. I'm not even trying to do it. But I was going to make it a little research topic one of these weekends if I had some time. Yeah. But um, I'll let you know how it goes, if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> don't hold me to it, but if it happens, I'm curious to see how it'll go. Yes, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, there's the Breast Cancer Walk. If you want to do that, I'm not trying to do no exercise. <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, uh, just, you know, put my put a couple of dollars in my, mind, you know, my mind, where my mind is, you know, what I'm saying, see you. if it can right. help right. the bigger picture. You know, what I'm saying, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see me walking that <laughs> amount of distance really helping <laughs> versus a couple of fifty, you know, hundred dollars, you know, a little, little, so, little something, little man. something. Man. <laughs> I might, I might go out there and hand out water or something, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, ain't, I ain't doing that walk. I don't even know how it is, but I know I ain't doing it. Yeah, but our thoughts with those who have passed, our thoughts are with those who are fighting the good fight through mm-hmm. it, man. Keep get, going, man. Get through it. Uh, yeah. Cancer's a bitch. Yeah. Oh, man, we got these questions, man. We got them early in, the, in, in, in the today's yeah. episode. Before we get into the questions, though, oh, brother, how you doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> we got straight to the business. We didn't even care about each other this episode. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Oh, God. This month has been long. <laughs> I, I, I touched on it quickly earlier, but... uh. You know, kids back in school, the traffic yeah. is back, as we were saying before. Yeah. And you hope every season, like, you know, drivers get smarter, but they don't, you nah. know. So you got to deal with the stupidity of that. Nobody knows to make a right turn when we're all making rights. Yeah. But uh, outside of traffic, work is busy, busy, busy. Um, Just I need another one of me to 
finish the job that I got. Yeah, so it. Uh, yep, uh, <laughs> you know I mean, but I would like two checks too, because I could probably find a copy of me if, if it was two <laughs> checks. I could I could make something happen, but so then you know what I mean. But I uh, work school, been studying so much, trying to get these exams behind me. Nice. And um, yeah, man, just a lot of. Warm weather, which I wasn't expecting, but it is starting to cool up. Happy about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I can grab those hoodies now in the back of the closet. <laughs> Hoodie season is among us. That's right. But, that's um, right. But um, <laughs> anyway, we talk about how was the rest of your September, though, bro? Uh, rest of the September was good. Uh, like I last said on the last episode, a bunch of birthdays. So, yeah, that shit go. drained the account you know quick. Go. You know how that go. <laughs> um, but... My son enjoyed his birthday, man. Mm-hmm. You was there, Bro, man. man shout awesome. out, man. He knew every <laughs> he knew every single dinosaur. Yes, he did. In the yes, camp, I was like, I could. It was seven seven of them I couldn't pronounce. I tried it. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, that boy, good. Uh, He's into yeah. his dinosaurs, man. Shouts to Darius, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, um, wifey's birthday was yesterday, so you know, just it's crazy because she's got crazy work hours. So it's not like when we were in like college and shit, right? Like. You knew your birthday was like an event. <laughs> uh, what age does it transition where you just, it's, it's officially just another day now? Kids. Yeah. It's it. it ain't even the age, it's kids. Yeah, they don't, they don't want to care. <laughs> yeah, they you know what I mean? Like, But I hear what you're saying because we have young single parents out there that still make their birthday event. I would say for me, it stopped being like a big event after... 33. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. After 33, I was just like, what are we doing now? Yeah. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I was cool with like a good dinner, some mm-hmm. good jokes, like that good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel it in the pit. In the gut. Yeah. And then, you know, a drink and go to sleep, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Because most of the time you probably got to work tomorrow again. Yeah. Yeah. As you get older. But, um, I don't know. I was, I, I, I'm not a fan of my birthday. Never really, really, never really, not a fan of it. Like it's, it really felt like another day. Like since I was like ten, like you know, <laughs> it's like it's just like yeah, it's your birthday. Like yeah, yeah, it's May. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? But I never really, I don't know, I never got hyped up for it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like right. I always try to give my wife a heads up. Like yo, whatever you think, I'm probably not interested in it. Just save a, save a dollar or two. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, yo, Netflix and chill. I could do that. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get my favorite ice cream from the spot. Yeah, I don't know. I never was big on them, but I don't know. It's just a tangent. Apologies. No, no, it's all good. Man. So, <laughs> other than that, work's been cool, man. It's that. It's still that good busy. Mm-hmm. You know, end of the month as always is slow for us. So, just preparing for the new month. A lot of shit is changing. You know, starting today, a lot of new policies going into effect. Mm. Uh, a lot of stuff we'll get into later. Yes, yes. On the healthcare front, but. Just happy here, man. Episode 29. 29, man. Almost in the <laughs> dirty 30s, man. That's right. That's been a, right. It's been a decent year. We've been moving through these. That's a fact. Oh, oh, go, yeah, uh, yeah. Here we go, man. Uh, wait, I'm trying to think of something else. <laughs> X was he good? He's good. Welfare check. Make sure everybody's all right. <laughs> um, it's the first of the month. Oh, it's been a while. Um, first of the month as always, but how's your mental health at this point mm. of the year? Good question. I don't think I checked on you since like midsummer. <laughs> <laughs> um, it can be a bit overwhelming because you you try to stay self motivated. Correct. Right. So everything has a plateau. Mm-hmm. Exercise and career goals, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So I do hit those points sometimes where I'm like. Like, do I even want to do this? You know what I'm saying? Like, why am I doing this? Like, you know, so in those moments, I kind of just, like, disconnect from everything, just kind of sit back and observe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'll I'll try and, like, listen to, like, motivational speeches or read and stuff like that and really just sit back and, like, get closer to family. You know? That's really it. I feel like at the end of the day. All right, but you know, get yeah. to hear that. Like I'm not a therapist. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not here to advise you, but it's good. To, you know, like get this, get some, get things off your chest, so to speak. Yeah. That's what we do here at the Premium Cage Podcast. We don't just give y'all news and shit. We make sure we check on each other because we love each other. Yeah. But um, that's what's up, man. But uh, yeah, uh, before we begin jumping, man, keep doing it though. Don't <laughs> don't stop whatever the fuck you're doing, man. Just keep doing it. Like, just wake up like the alarm clock and keep it going. Sure. You gotta kind of be a robot to it. But um, mm-hmm. me personally, um. 
I could probably uh, side with you as far as the overwhelming. It's just um, feels like a lot is happening at once this month. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, kids at school, um, wife, you know, maternity. We just getting through that. Baby getting big quick. Homework still not getting handed in. Rooms not getting clean. Like it's little. Sh- like it's, yeah. I mean, work is is just full of shit sometimes. But like you love it, so you keep going back. You know, it's a cluster, but you know, you dodge and weave, keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Just like traffic, just don't get no accidents. Just trying to, you know, I mean, just trying to get to point A to point B smoothly. Uh-huh. But um, what I have been trying to maintain also this month is just uh, staying even keel as far as uh, being happy but not too happy. You know, what I mean, you don't mm. want. I'm, I'm trying not to let everybody know as happy as I am inside, and I don't want to portray that I am as happy as I am inside. Yeah, you know, what you think of something else? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's weird. I'm, I'm a guarded happy right now. I'll say that. I'll say that. <laughs> But uh, but uh, uh, wellness-wise, I think I'm all right. Uh, steady incline on the year, still going up. Yeah. Very slow, very 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 low slope, but it's going up. <laughs> <laughs> not, very low slope. Not steep at all, up. but it's going up. <laughs> oh good. Oh man, yeah. So um, on the same note, the the good thing about it is um, no matter what, like I know that somebody's watching. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like somebody's always finding some sort of purpose or motivation when they're watching you move correct so it's it's great that you and i can make that switch right like from all right this is a little too much what the hell to be like you know what fuck it we're gonna push through so it's a thin line though <laughs> <laughs> that pushed me it's heavy a, like a, a thin line like <laughs> shit about five ten minutes before your work before your day uh, start yeah. for work uh, you, you yeah. be like yeah i got the numbers to call out right in the phone i could do that and <laughs> They wouldn't even they wouldn't even say no. It's just I can you know what I mean, just knowing you got the ability to do, you're just like, nah, yeah. I can't do it. They're gonna think I'm, I'm taking off. Oh yeah. And you won't. Hell yeah. But you can't do it. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> but you won't. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I hate I hate being oh, responsible yeah. sometimes. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hate it sometimes, boy. Uh I wonder uh what we had what we what we wanna go through first. Oh, uh, so favorite, favorite part of the show and as always, man, we thank you all for engaging with us. Um, we know y'all love the question segment, so we're going to keep it coming, man. And we got some good questions for y'all today. So um, I'm going to lead. You want me to lead this one? Or? Talk to me, man. Talk right, to me. cool. So do you feel like people living with disabilities are recognized? And is there enough awareness out there? Definitely not enough awareness. Um but it's hard to continue to stay aware, in my opinion, with uh, the ever-evolving emotional and physical states that people go through. Mm. Are. I mean, not that there's new things every month, but it does feel like every once in a while it's new things every month. Like, um, And, you know, just coming from my standpoint, from a profession, you try to accommodate each and every one at all times, all parties. Mm-hmm. It's just hard to keep up sometimes, and um, sometimes it feels like it's getting lost in the sauce. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I still think we are striving towards trying being super inclusive on all fronts. But with anything, it's just a transition, and it definitely could be going a lot faster than what it is. I'll say that for sure. Yeah. But um, I don't think uh, I think they are being recognized definitely a lot more than when we were younger. That's true. Um, you know, as far as uh, being put on stages a bit o- more often, they always have the Olympics that uh, cater to others, but. Definitely going to be moving at a faster rate, I feel like. And I'm glad you bring it up because in your profession, say somebody's building a, a two-floor like, convenience store. Mm-hmm. And but go ahead. Oh, no, no. Uh, no. But just as far as uh, just trying to be inclusive and making sure everyone can shop at the store. You know what I mean? Right, right. So does it piss you off like if they just want a set of stairs? Don't get me wrong, like, end of the day, so I'm about a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if, uh, like, don't get me wrong, we could put this fancy ramp in that, you know, that has the five for turner radius at the end, that the, you know I mean, the metal bars, g- nice, really super good, you know, OSHA approved handrails. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We could do that and everything, but, um, that framework and that concrete is going to cost you a little bit. And you want the sand concrete or you want the high gloss? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we got to cut, we got to block the street off. That's another step fee we're gonna have to put in you know what i'm saying <laughs> like it's just as a and that's an unfortunate inconvenience for it because um granted you want to be inclusive by adding the ramp but there's no disability fund just for you wanting to be more helpful mm. when you want to be helpful you just gotta do it out your own pocket 88 percent of the time like mm-hmm. it's cool to you know find uh 
I guess, sponsor groups where everyone's able to pitch in and then put it towards a cause, but it just takes a lot of pitching to actually take effect. Mm -hmm. But um, it doesn't bug me. I like a good puzzle, but if the guy isn't, the GCs or the owner's not looking to pay for it, we can't force them. <laughs> yeah, and you make a great point because the city should make provisions for that. And they do. And a lot of times the zoning or code regulated where you have no choice due to mm. the amount of occupants that's coming into your space. Right. And like I said before, like a small two-story store, maybe 50, 60 occupants, you might get away with one quick step in front. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But in the event you are catering to over 100 or something people, you need the ramp, you need the handrails, you need all the lights, the gizmos, all the fire alarm. Right. You need a lot more. A lot more is going to have to take place in, in this space in order for it to, uh, to fully function at a way you should for this amount of square footage we're giving you. Right. So it really just depends on the size of what you're doing, uh, the purpose of what you're doing, and how many people you really want to have in there at once. And that's good, too, because so, God forbid, person's in the wheelchair, right? Mm -hmm. But, hey, somehow they made it past the steps. Correct. Now they're in your store. They come up to you and they say, hey, you know, where's the DVDs? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's on the second floor. And you see this long set of steps. There's no elevator. There's no escalator. And this person is in this wheelchair looking at you like, you, you're joking, right? I hate to be this guy, but if I was like the employee and I came face to face, I would hope he would have a sense of humor for me real quick because I'm definitely going to ask How'd you get in here, Nick? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, oh, like no, I'm sorry. No, 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 no uh, sorry. But, um, but no, it sucks, though, when they yeah. <laughs> they're in a situation yeah. like that. And they just, yeah. I just hope whoever is there could, you know, um, be sensitive to the situation and do their best to accommodate. Like, if, if there's a walkie-talkie system, grab one. Like, hey, I'll go search for you, or I'm not right. going to carry up these steps. But um, tell me what you're looking for. I'll make sure we got it. I'll bring it back. That, just you got to be sensitive to the situation if you can't accommodate right. for everyone at a minimum. Yeah, definitely. And I know, especially at my job, like they started looking at a, a lot of locations to make sure they were wheelchair accessible. Um, they accommodated for people living with disabilities, especially having an internship program where people can get a pipeline into the hospital. Nice. So it, it's I just wish it was more um, widely accepted or a wider initiative mm -hmm. that more businesses and more people would make it their business if I'm opening up a brick and mortar that I'm making sure it's accessible and inclusive mm -hmm. to everyone so that, I mean, it maximizes revenue. You know what I mean? Like, if you across <laughs> the street, so say there's a Radio Shack and a Best Buy, right? Now, mm -hmm. everybody loves Best Buy. Mm -hmm. But if the Radio Shack has more provisions for people living with disabilities, that Radio Shack might get a little bit more play. Might. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just might. You know, this, uh, sadly, though, it is still a numbers game, and the uh, the amount of those unable versus the amount that is able is still, like, uh, a very small percentage. Uh, granted, it's a common thing. You know what I mean? It's not... It's, you may not go, a, if you're out and about, you may not go a day without seeing someone in some sort of uh, disabled situation, but that one person you saw out of the hundreds that also passed your eye, there was nothing wrong with them that you could tell from mm. the naked eye. So that's where it kind of comes up. It's just, not to be funny, again, but like foot traffic. You know what I'm saying? If mm -hmm. You don't see too many wheelchairs rolling by. You know what I'm saying? They're usually going straight from ride to location, mm. location to ride. I hate to be insensitive. But <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But, I hear you, man. Shit. <laughs> Amazon, if I was in a wheelchair, Amazon would be my favorite app. Best Buy would be my favorite app. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deliver it. UPS guy, I'll tip him every, tip him good. <laughs> you know what I, mean? but, I hear you. I hear you. But, uh, <laughs> definitely got to get more inclusive, though. But um, <laughs> they got to come outside as well. So if similar to per people going on marches, just trying to bring awareness to something. Right. I've never seen a wheelchair march in regard to do more for us. Mm-hmm. Not that they should do it. I think you know people are well aware of the situation and they do what they can to accommodate. But I never seen them out, outside, you know, rolling down, trying to, fucking trying to, you know, make make a point. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, all right. What we got next? Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit you with the question. Though. Uh, why do people wait until after the relationship is over to get themselves together? I love this. Talk one. to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love this one. Um. Honestly, I'm I'm 
wondering myself. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I was waiting for some deep shit. Like, I, yeah, I was like, no, he about to, he about I, to hit him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm wondering myself. Now, I have an opinion on it. Of, of course. course it's, right? it's the Freedom of Cage podcast, <laughs> man, where we unlock a free state of mind. Definitely, definitely. I think what it is, is there's a sense of retribution in pain and breakups and knowing that you've lost something. There's that that hunger to feel like you can be better than the situation that you lost. And it's the ultimate contradiction because you're supposed to give your best in a relationship mm-hmm. so that you compliment your partner. Correct. But there are plenty of people who lose themselves, whether it's weight, finances, uh, overall drive, sexual ability, you know what I mean? Like, for whatever reason, no judgment. But it just it amazes me how after the breakup or after the divorce, all of a sudden, it's like transformation time. And it, and what I hear a lot of the times is the time frees up, right? So, for instance, right mm, now, okay. if you're in a relationship, you're all about spending time with your partner. Mm-hmm. Now, if y'all got kids, y'all got to spend time and y'all got to take care of the kids. Mm-hmm. So time becomes valuable. Yeah, valuable. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Like it's it's gone before you know it. Now, all of a sudden, if it's just you and the partner, you got all the time in the world to worry about you and take care of you. That's a fact. Or if it's just you and the kid, you take care of the kid, and then you got time to worry about yourself. You got nobody to please. True, true. I have a point. I think I concur. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only other thing I could probably think of to add to that is, uh, like, if you've been driving, you know, side by side with someone forever, and then it just stops, so you hit the brakes, and you got to go in reverse. Mm. You never went backwards before, in a sense. So you start, you know, if not uh, rewriting your wrongs, so to speak. Mm. Uh, just more of a you know, man in the mirror, Michael, Michael Jack type shit, like. Mm. Who did I used to be? Was I happy with that person? I'm happy who I am now. And whatever you were when you happy, you start chasing it. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Sixty percent might be paid in this, depending on how how the situation dissolves. <laughs> you know, you get a bit spicy on the breakup. You know, yeah, I mean? yeah. You know, somebody come home early. Who the fuck is this? Why are you here? Like, you know, what I'm saying, it who knows? You know, what I'm saying, but yeah. uh, depending on the circumstance of departure, it could be a little spicy. Mm-hmm. But if it's an amicable situation, like like Bezos, he's like, yeah, it's okay. You had a good run, man. Yeah. Like, how much you need? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so rich. You write the check for me. I got. I gotta go. You know what I'm saying? If it's yeah. one of those, shit. I don't know. If she did. She glow up. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, it's interesting with people who are in the relationship. If they asked or made a request for the change that happened after the breakup, because now, because say you were like, "Yo, listen, you know, you gotta get your finances together." Mm-hmm. Like, I can't handle everything. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, after the breakup, homegirl. Stock taking, market guru. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, she got futures, she got options, mm-hmm. fintech, mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. She, she up. Portfolio is off the chain. She up. Yeah, so. And we'll put it out there to the people. Like, have you ever asked for something in a relationship, didn't get it, and then as soon as they left you? They do all, it. Yeah, they do it. He said, oh, she left me because I had no job. You know, she's holding me down. But as soon as she dumped me, man, HBO called me on Monday. And I was like, yo, you want to come <laughs> down? I was like, yeah, man. So that was my big break, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it wasn't her. What happened? She's tight. <laughs> and it's funny. I think that's why a lot of people stay in bad relationships. Because they're like, I done put in all this work. Something got to pay off. I ain't going to leave because then when I leave. Can't and they pay off. I'm going to be pissed. You can't be in a relationship just saying I'm one hit away. Or <laughs> Memphis bleak it. You can't Memphis bleak the relationship. Nah, nah, that's fine. You can't Memphis bleak it. So, yo, nah, you can't, you can't one hit away. I'll tell you, there's a lot of people doing that shit right now. They Memphis bleak it. They How like, long I'm one hit away, man. You going you gonna, you gonna to stay around as long as Hove? Yo. <laughs> Like, I need to know. What if that hit don't come tomorrow? Like, you know what, I'm what about the next year? 
<laughs> you gonna hold me down? Like, <laughs> it's like he's throwing up the sides. Oh, sh- I don't know. Um, yeah, that's tough. Man. Yeah, it, yeah, it all depends on how it, how it works out, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, you gotta, tough. but in any uh, turmoil, you gotta pick up the pieces, make Indeed. yourself better. Indeed. Make yourself better where you were failing before. Yeah. Man. My my big question is, once you do have the space, whether you better yourself or they better themselves, mm-hmm. do they? Is there a rare breed that betters themselves to get back to the situation that they was in? Like, you left me because I didn't have a job. I mm-hmm. got the job. Can I get you back now? Or were there other things tied to it? It's like, oh, you ain't like my dick neither? You should have you should have told me that. <laughs> I, I, got, I got three jobs now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it depends on how the breakup happens, right? Like, if you're one of those unique unicorns that could say, listen, this ain't working out. I'm done. It's over. Mm -hmm. Because not too many relationships end like that. People are either too scared or they're too busy doing them that, you know, they end up getting busted. Mm -hmm. But I think if it's the the former, then, yeah, you can, you know, do better, you know, and be like, listen, I got my shit together. What's good? Let's make it happen Mm -hmm. again. But if it's the latter, bro, (laughs) Mm. (laughs) you probably done lost that. You done lost them. Here's another spin. What if the, you broke up on an ultimatum as far as, yo, mm. I don't like what you're doing. I give you 60 days to get it together. Mm. Day, day 59 come. You know, you come back, yo, <sighs> <laughs> I'm not there yet, but can I get an extension? Like, you know, is that, is that permitted? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> how, long, uh, how long are you willing to wait for me to get whatever yeah. it was back together? That, that's a good question, man. I, it all depends on love. Mm. It's fickle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the shit. love will only get you so far, man, because the bills don't stop coming, and Mm-mm. especially if the person who's doing better in a relationship is surrounded by people who are doing good, and it's even worse if they have partners who are doing good, because then they're like, the they fuck? exist. <laughs> like, yeah, I can find someone who's on my level. So mm-hmm. why am I here? It's a unique situation, uh. man. Tough. Memphis bleak, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is tough, man. <laughs> uh, uh, let me, uh, let me know. I'm curious. Uh, what hurts worse, uh, being ghosted or being told to your face that you're not interested? Like to the face, to the face. Like if I never hear from you again, I know what it is. You know what I mean? It, you know. I know what it is as far as you not being interested, but I don't know. So <laughs> I could make up whatever theory in my head, like, oh, oh shit, fine, yeah. you know, like, oh, shit, she probably hit the lottery, moved to Hawaii, <laughs> duh. <laughs> you, like, why like, didn't I think of that? Yeah, like, we had a great time. Of course she likes me. <laughs> you know, you know how Sprint is. They cut off your shit at $1. Mm-hmm, <laughs> you know what mm-hmm, I mean? Like, their money. Yeah, so, of course, there had to be some wild reason if she ghosted me. But if you, t- like, have you? Can you remember the last time somebody looked you in the eye and said, Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Mm. Shit, yeah. <laughs> so we need a raise, nigga. Said, nah. <laughs> All right. I'm going on lunch break. <laughs> That's a real pain, That's bro. That's a pain, though. <laughs> Eating mad slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! But um, yeah, not too many face-to-face now. It's usually via email, text. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, those are the subtle, uh, the subtle um disapprovals. Mm-hmm. We take them, we eat them, like cry about them in the shower. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it's what it is. It truly is what it is with that one. Um, yeah. But my whole thing is, if you had the courage to ghost me like digitally, you never really cared about me in the first place. True. Because you can hang up. Stop the call, turn off the video chat, whatever form of communication you did, like, you might, might be crazy. You might, might you know, yeah. go to the roof, find the first way down. And you won't find out for who knows how long. You know what I'm saying? You should at least, not, if you don't care, you don't care, but at least care about the person's mm-hmm. uh, immediate well-being. You can't hold them yeah. down forever, but check on them for the first six hours. Yeah. <laughs> six hours. Hey, if you kill yourself six and a half hours after me, it's like, oh, shit. hey, man. <laughs> I stayed for six hours. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't know as soon as I left, she was gone. Yeah. But, yeah, if you don't care, uh, you got to do it face-to-face. The one thing I don't recommend is the people who have conversations with themselves. Like, like man in the mirror type thing? Like, nah. 
<laughs> so what I'm saying is, y'all went out, you know what I'm saying, night's over, maybe like a day, day or two, you reach out, hey, what's good, we had such a great time, can't wait to do it again. No answer. Hit her up later on that day. Uh, double text You know what I'm saying, like, hey, you Triple know, just reaching man. out, you know, maybe you didn't get my first text, I know you busy, uh, you know what man. I'm saying, just checking sure, you know, making sure you good, you know what I'm saying, it's crazy out there. Mm. Day number two. Yo, what's good, ma? Good morning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know you got a busy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get where I'm going with mm-hmm. this. Like, it's mm-hmm. about until it gets to the wow. <laughs> like, you could have kept it a hundred with sad, me. So, uh... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what was it? You know what I mean? I didn't have a Freedom Cage podcast shirt on. Mm. Plug, plug, plug. plug. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's like the wildest thing, man. Because my biggest thing is. Don't ever give nobody evidence against you to make you look stupid. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want that specifically. Yeah, and like this yeah. nigga still texting me. Yeah, you don't, you don't want that. You don't want that. She song. will put you on display for everybody. Like if you're really trying to get in contact though, I don't see me going more than two back to back texts without a response. <laughs> I would just make a phone call. Like you know, what I'm saying? Yeah. If, if you don't see the missed call, yeah, I get it. I'm not, I, I'm not, you're dead to me now, like, like, I, I can't, I can't, I text twice, I called you, like, you know what I'm saying, there's you nothing more, dead to there's me. nothing more I can do, like, I'm this close to just putting you, just, just close to deleting it, so, it's like, definitely gonna see the number and be like, zip is this, but, um, nah, or, nah. yeah, yeah, nope, oh, I got a question, um, <laughs> if he's walking down the street, regular day, uh-huh. let's say he was right after work, whatever, you see your coworker getting into a scuffle, right? Yeah. Like, would you assist? Or just like, uh, yeah, well, I just got off trying to get home. Like, would you just keep going? It depends on our relationship. It really does. Because often, go ahead. I, I'll paint the picture. Same, mm-hmm. same, same in the big building, same floor, different divisions, though. You, mm-hmm. might, you might pass each other at the water cooler, like, twice a yeah. week. No. No. Oh. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Like, for me personally, I don't know your life. I don't know <laughs> what's going on with you. And I got my own yeah, shit. I don't so, know your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so often I've seen hood niggas get jobs mm-hmm. and think <laughs> other niggas is hood niggas. Yeah. Too. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they no. get into some shit outside. And they see their black friend come out, and they like, oh, shit, we about to throw down now. Nah. And they black friend speed to the right, like, oh, I don't Ooh. get involved in that I'm mess. Not, <laughs> I'm not one of those. <laughs> I'm not one of those at all. I don't know what thuggeration you're doing, Word, but I'm going fine. home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I am late as it is. But, um, <laughs> that's funny. But, uh, you, damn, so you wouldn't help if it was, like, because... I know you say you don't know, you know, you don't know him as far as, you know, five yeah. to nine. You know, nine to five. But do you really mm-hmm. know anyone's five to nine at work? Like what they really do? Right. I don't know. If I, would, I think I might help like one or two people. Like, like maybe like the payroll lady. Or like. That makes sense. <laughs> so like, that, that's a or big like, deal. I mean, or like if there was like, like a favorite chef or something downstairs. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh no, you always big deal. me up with the extra ice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm going to help you out make sure you get where we got to go. Like, but, um, yeah. No, because there are so many variables in a scuffle. And, you know, we got years in, bro. Yeah. We've seen some yeah, shit. Yeah, we've seen some. Yeah. 30 <laughs> you know seconds I mean? is a long time. Yeah, man. So. <laughs> We can't just be jumping and shit no uh-uh. more. <laughs> yeah, everything like, gets, everything gets evaluated. My footwear, yeah. <laughs> the, the street, yeah. the weather conditions, <laughs> everything. Exactly. Like, everything gets evaluated. Imagine like so. Imagine it's you and another coworker walking, and you see that coworker, and the coworker you're work walking with is like, "Yo, let's go help him." Like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. We don't know him <laughs> like that. <laughs> we gotta go. Yeah, this way. like, but look at him. He's getting his ass whipped. <laughs> Does he deserve it? He probably pinched somebody girl's ass. Like, I don't know. <laughs> he might have, he might have deserved that one. Yeah, like, we don't know that man's life. Like, <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta nah. make, yeah, as an adult, you got to make smarter decisions. Thank you. I mean, hey, 16, 17, 18, yo, let's, let's do from my homeroom. Let's go help him out. Yeah. That's one thing, but. Because the last thing you want, bro, is your wife showing up at either the precinct 
or the hospital looking at you. So you help Jim from from the from, from the prison room, nigga? What's wrong with you? Who the who the hell is that? <laughs> I saw him at the vending machine one time. <laughs> We talk about, about the Cowboys game. It was like a week ago. Like, Who is he to you? <laughs> like yeah. that you had to risk your, yeah, life. risk your life coming home to your family. Yeah. You know what they're gonna say already. That shit is playing in my head yeah. as I'm watching this coworker mm-hmm. get fucked yeah. up. I'm not going over uh-uh. there. Man. Too many questions. <laughs> I'd rather answer the yo. Why you ain't help me? Like nigga, I don't know you. Yeah. Versus the so how you want to bail out today? It's like. Whoa. Yeah. Can I make a call? Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? But ugh, yeah. ugh. I'd rather i I'd rather sit across from the guy the next day and give him every reason why I didn't go over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like How would you feel if you came to work? <laughs> <laughs> the next day, like, yeah, you heard we had a gym? No, nah, what happened to Jim? Unless you saw Jim get his ass off out <laughs> before you ran into Junius, right? <laughs> you, you, you just like, no, nah, what happened to Jim? <laughs> Yo, Jim died yesterday. What? Damn, that's dark. That is dark. My dumb ass up like, what happened? <laughs> like, I gotta know. Like, so, oh no, he got home and tripped down the steps. Crazy. I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like, at least, at least I didn't, I didn't leave him at his, at his, at his death. Stop. Yeah, you know yeah. I'd I, I probably deny it too. Like, yeah. I was like, you saw what happened to Smith? Mm-mm. Nope. <laughs> I, went, I went home. So I was home like faster than normal. It was crazy. Yeah. All um, in all, it wasn't my business. <laughs> oh, man. oh, all right. Um, let's move over to politics. Yeah, um, man. It, it's been a rough day. It's been a Shit, rough couple rough, of rough days. Couple days. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man. Where we at? How's your portfolio, man? It, it's looking. <laughs> it's looking. It's looking bad, man. <laughs> like so. On September twentieth, you know, if you're into investing. You know that it looked terrible. Um, there was a lot of talk with China and them not accepting crypto and things going on over there. So a lot of stocks, like the stock market took a real hit. Mm. And then fast forward about a week later, the 27th and the 28th, it was just looking bleak again. You know what I mean? I don't know about y'all, took but I was like, wow. <laughs> took, a, took, a crap, took a crap on you, on your portfolio. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... You know, depending on how you do it, I mean, we're not experts at all, but we do dabble. Um, you could have done many things, right? Uh, for me personally, it allowed me to reevaluate my portfolio. You know, maybe I need to start moving some things around. Got to diversify your bonds, man. That's right, Wu Tang <laughs> Clan. <laughs> you know, I'll never forget that stuff. Oh, shit. Um, but then it also opened opportunity to buy into certain stuff because it was down. True. You know what I mean? And depending on how much research you do, um, it is helpful. But hang in there, guys. You know what I mean? It's the long game, right? Yeah, yeah man. We didn't do this for the tomorrow turnaround, you <laughs> That's know? That's right. That's right. Just, uh, just, just come back soon. Yeah. <laughs> so just, please. Yeah. Hell oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, it's kind of fake salute news, but sorry it had to happen. Uh, the former head of the Ebony magazine, mm. who was uh, accused last year for illegally using the cash of the business for other things. Uh, turns out SEC has officially charged him for uh, running marijuana businesses and also keeping the magazine afloat with other funds outside of the ones we collected. Mm. Um, hey, man, salute, man. Hey, wait. you got a family magazine. And you can take a little bit of the proceeds, make some extra proceeds that this proceed wasn't giving me, and you get funnel it back. Salute. Just don't get caught, man. Yeah. Family, friends, you don't want to go through that shit. Yeah. Sad man, shit. It's tough, man. It's tough. But um, anyway, other other business front, people still not going back to work, man. Um, granted, the additional grants have pretty much stopped or depleted. I don't think the Treasury said we're going broke any day. <laughs> but... um. Employers around the world are now committing to not drug testing anymore. Period. Like, they, we'll take you as, as you is. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, you know, say hey, we just flipping burgers, man. It's not a rocket. It's not. A, it's not rocket science. Wait, what, what kind of drugs we talking here, man? Cause oh shit! There's still I limitations. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to show up to the <laughs> ER and <laughs> they got Tyrone the crackhead trying to give take my he blood. Said, he <laughs> said that nigga gave me a burger with a bite in it. <laughs> <laughs> like it. I'm not tipping this thing. <laughs> like, why is my Jello open? <laughs> yeah, like, this is not an open. Yo, yeah, you can't have it. I, I don't know. I hope they're very. 
how lean it can you be? Like, hey, <laughs> hey, you can use drugs, just not these drugs. Like, there got to be a hard line where they yeah. got okay drugs. And not, I, I'm curious to see this is on a corporate page. I hope so, too. For okay man. drugs versus not okay drugs in order to do this job that we yeah. hire you for. But that would be a funny <laughs> list to put together. Oh, man. Um, outside of that, yo, go to work, man. Please. Um, yeah, I'm man. tired of waiting at the drive through because we ain't got enough workers. <laughs> I'm tired of it because, oh, we don't have enough people. I remember when I was in Florida, like, fucking Waffle House was like, yo, we closing at 2 o'clock. What you mean? We, it was like, bro, it was 2.08. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, you got people sitting down? He said, yo, shift, morning shift leaving. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, he's yeah. like, we don't have we don't have an 8 a p.m. shift anymore. I was like, your Waffle House. He's like, yo, man, money's good down here, man. Nobody's working. I was like, all right. With the IHOP. It wasn't the same. <laughs> it wasn't the same. I was tight. Yeah, it's not. That it's was really tight. Not, but, uh, yeah, but when you're in Florida, you must pan the Lena. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Talk to me, man. It's that time again, man. It is time for your Pandalina Spice Update from Freedom Cage Podcast. Mm-hmm. A lot is going on, and it's the perfect transition because what we were just talking about is exactly what's going on, especially in New York City. So, as of September 27th, the official vaccine mandate went into place where if you are not vaccinated... You have officially been terminated from your job. Damn. Yeah. So you can just imagine the kind of impact this is going to have on the city or any other place that has mandates where the workers have to be vaccinated. Uh, There's a lot of lawsuits pending. There's a lot of, you know, court injunctions. People are very, very upset. Some people have had years and years with a company and they're about to be ousted. It's it's crazy. Like, I, I get sticking to your guns, but when your livelihood is like uh, dangling in front of it, mm. is it is it best just to you know not roll over and conform, but you know just get with the program kind of. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. a, there has to be a th- you know I mean it has to be a, a a point where you just go, yeah, I'm just gonna get with the program because it's the best thing to do or am I just gonna stand stand 10 toes down on something I don't fully understand so I'm scared to talk about it think about it inquire about it you know what I mean because mm-hmm. if you found out any information you know it's helpful and, and fruitful yeah but I don't know when money's on the line yeah man you gotta chop that up man <laughs> you gotta it's do. tricky so Kathy Hochul she's our interim interim um governor in New York City um she announced some contingency plans. So they involve bringing in vaccinated workers from other states, hiring students and retirees, similar to what they did last year for the pandemic, Mm -hmm. or deploying medically trained National Guard people into the hospitals, clinics, and things of that nature. So a lot of planning, a lot of things going on because the show still has to go on. Every day. People still need services. People still need to go shop. So we'll see what happens, man. Yeah, the only thing I'm worried about is, you know, what some people, you know, standing firm, leaving. Yeah. And once you start pulling people from other locations and items that are meant to be where they are. Right. You have so many Indians to go around, you know what I'm saying? If there's a real crisis, now you got to pull those people back. And now we're back in the same place because they was needed where they should be. Yeah. Uh, It's going to be sticky for a little bit. Oh. Yeah, and then the next thing where we're really looking to talk more on this, um, I believe it was mid-September, the courts blocked a mandate for the teachers' union, mm-hmm. and on September 27th, a federal appeals court ruled that the city can proceed with the mandate. So any teachers who are not vaccinated by September 27th, I believe they had a grace period after that to either get the vaccination shot or they could no longer work at the school. No pain so, either, right? Yeah. So, of course, you can like you can imagine with the teachers union, this is big. Mm-hmm. This is really big. So, we're looking forward to having something where we can talk to some people who are teachers? Yeah, we want to know. Like, if you uh, you stood firm in your stance, you chose yes. not to get it, whether it be for religious be- beliefs, personal beliefs. Absolutely. Um, talk to us. We're curious to know why, what made you stick with that, and uh, do you plan on changing your mind 
anytime in the near future. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those that did do it, we know why you did it, but let us know why you feel everybody else should do it too. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? like, definitely, definitely. So this next subject really is still on a pandalina, but it blew my mind. COVID dog sniffers. When I saw this shit, I was like, you got to be kidding me. COVID dog sniffers? You can sniff COVID now? It's like like Generation X or Z. Yeah. The Hit movie. Like, so even if he does sniff me, now what? Yeah. You're going to take me somewhere? So <laughs> like, what, it, what it said was, if this dog sniffs you and it says, COVID, COVID, COVID. Say you were going into a concert you paid mad money for. You can't get in. Because he smelled COVID on him? Yo, uh, instantly I thought of Kanye. uh, Guess who's going to jail tonight? Yeah, yeah, that's a whole (laughs) fact. Like, nah. You and and Bruno over here? Nah, nah, nah. nah. (laughs) I waited like three months for these tickets. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. Nah. It ain't like cocaine. You see a physical physical product. Dog, Straight up. Like drug sniffing dogs, bomb sniffing dogs. I yeah. get it. There's a fruitful thing that they are looking for. It's a material item. You can see it, yeah. diffuse it, arrest someone because of it. Yeah. But the whole, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. He covers his mouth. You have to go that way. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, guys, we're trying to convince people to get the vaccine. Stop being stupid. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, you can sniff COVID. I thought you could need tests for it. You're giving people ammunition to say this is bullshit. It's a fact. <laughs> like, you it's know what fact. I mean? Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. But anyway, <laughs> I, I just had to share that with you. I, I found it hilarious. I just Let me show up at Barclays and see some dogs. I'm going to be like, yo, yeah, y'all bugging. Here, but wait, I think y'all here. <laughs> yeah, bet be looking for them drugs, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, y'all better keep Cujo away from me. Nah, I ain't playing. <laughs> I don't really like dogs like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So staying on the subject, man, Pfizer boosters have been approved. The boosters have been approved by CDC uh, on September 24th and are now available for a couple of different people, right? So before we told you there was a third dose that was just for people that were immunocompromised. This is a the official booster that if you've had your second shot within the last six months, you can get this booster. Hmm. Now, right now, of course, they're going to give it to um, people who are high at risk, people who are over the age of 64, people between the age of 18 and 64 that may be high risk. Uh, I think I said that already. And then they're also giving it to people who are between the ages of 18 and 64 that have an occupation that makes them high risk for exposure to COVID-19. Okay, like close contact shit. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. So healthcare workers, you already know the deal. That's us. Um, anybody who works in a nursing home facility, things of like that, all of that, all encompassing, right? Moderna and J&J, if you got those vaccines, they are still looking to see about how they'll administer a booster. Uh, so they're just asking those people to be patient. Uh, And then the state, so the state says that right now for the Pfizer vaccine, they believe it works for ages between 5 and 11. So during the trials, it looks good. They're thinking that they may get an emergency use authorization by the latest, late October. Wow. So parents i know if you had anywhere between uh, um what was it 12 and to 16 i know that was a little bit confusing a little concerning but you got it done or if you didn't uh wish you the best now it gets even more concerning right five to eleven five years old man five between the ages of like five and ten getting a shot you don't have you don't even got their own id how they're right. they gonna carry a vaccine card now like, right i don't know um, like I get it. Like, like um, it has to be integrated in. It's gonna be a slow grind, but you know, the, f- the flu shot is given out at all ages. Yeah. This at some point, which is you know, just an updated version of the flu, a lot more deadlier. Yeah. But same protocols though. Long story short, um, it's it's a vaccine. I mean, it's a disease that you're trying to cure. Mm-hmm. Keep going, man. We we gotta keep going. Yeah. <laughs> like, and the last thing I'll drop is just some quick stats that I found mind blowing. Uh, right. 
So the average COVID-19 hospital stay and the sources Becker's Hospital Review, uh, they are a very prominent source of healthcare information. And they actually got this information from Fair Health, which does a lot of pricing for healthcare costs uh, around the Northeast region. So <clears throat> average charge for a complex stay. Now this means that you got the ventilator, like it was looking bad. Mm -hmm. 317k god damn and the average reimbursement on that if your provider is par 98,000 the median for a uh, covid-19 stay 208k Ooh. and the average reimbursement on that 71k i'm sorry to say but it's cheaper to die I don't know, because burials are fucking expensive, too. Not as expensive as that, but... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? 25 for the casket, yeah. you know what I mean? 40 for the procedure, you know what I mean? Another 10 on the limos, like... You know what I mean? Hold 10 down for the event hall. Let my mom, big mama cook another five grand. <laughs> Shit, that's only three days at the hospital. <laughs> you know, it only took one day to bury the boy. That's a fact. That's a fact. Oh, oh man. That's a fact. I, I, and they had more stats. I won't really bore you guys with that, but... Just to let you know the kind of cost implications that a COVID stay can have, not just on the hospital, but on you, right? The hospital has funds in the tuck for situations like this. Do you? You know what I mean? So if you're out there without a job, you don't have insurance, God forbid you get COVID. It's, like, it's even bigger than your health, man. Yeah. If you survive it, now you busy paying back. When your rainy day fund wasn't built for this amount of rain, so yeah, it's gonna be a drought. <laughs> we gotta change. It. We, we we gotta start doing tsunami days. Like yeah, so, yeah, rain ain't enough. It, it's different. Rain ain't enough. Oh, mm -hmm. sad. I got some sad street news, man. What's up? Dollar Tree. Wow. <sighs> Turns out they can no longer keep selling things at a dollar to stay afloat. They're raising their prices, man. Get the fuck out of it. It's Dollar Tree. Nah, no, no more, man. We can't do it. We can't do it. <laughs> like, yo, they going up, man. They are gonna, gonna start introducing items on their shelves that cost more than a dollar. So they gonna change their name to Tree? Hell no. Just, <laughs> just, 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 you just gotta respect me, man. You know, it's, it's Open like, Dollar Tree. <laughs> hell, man. It's, it's that blue magic, man. Just, <laughs> like, just gotta keep coming back, regardless really what I'm doing. They hit you with the inflation, but you know what? The streets is done. It's not the first time. <laughs> I remember when the dollar van started asking for a dollar twenty five. That hurt. I wasn't ready. I was like, I ain't got it, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who has change? <laughs> Who's walking around with a quarter? Like, yeah. I got this dollar just for you. You don't want it? <laughs> yeah, like dollar vans was express buses before they were popping. Yo. Like, a lot more dangerous, though, but yeah, definitely definitely get you to KP in no yeah. time. <laughs> I think the worst yeah. experience I saw, somebody just got their J's on Flatbush from Dr. J's. He was walking in the dollar van, and they snatched the bag as he was walking oh, in, man. They pushed him in the clothes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah son. It was terrible. Oh, man. That's like, that's like, hey, you got to pay somebody to get out. And it, But the dollar van driver just drove off. Like, I was, was like. Nothing. Nothing problem, papi. <laughs> nothing problem. I'm here to give Yo. you a ride. No more, no less. Yo, that's crazy. But, yeah, man, streets is done, man. Dollar Tree going up, same thing. Ah, oh, man. Uh, um. <sighs> I saw the Fugees, mm -hmm. had a little reunion thing in Brooklyn, super dope, Lauren made him wait like three hours. Wow. But you know, that's Lauren, man, Lauren going Lauren. But all in all, I heard it was a good set. What worries me is now they're announcing a tour. Yeah. <sighs> if, if Lauren couldn't get to a Brooklyn location in less than, in a, a, in a time span of three hours. Yeah. I think she lived in like the city. I think she may even live in Brooklyn. If she couldn't get to somewhere else in Brooklyn in three hours, she wasn't trying. <laughs> you know that she don't even wear makeup. Like what you wait? I don't even know what you're waiting on. Like you know, you yeah. you're natural, ninety eight percent of the time. Can't let the people wait. But now they're announcing that they're going on tour. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. People can't keep falling for this though. Somehow, <sighs> some way, it happens. I mean, it's the promoters. That are going to lose because, to your point, if people are hip to the way that Lauren's moving, they're not going to buy the tickets. Well, it would be dope if the Fuji was smart, you know, branded as a Fuji's tour. As soon as she missed her first night, 
every night after that, just start bringing in powerful female uh, step-ins. Like, mm. it's the food you tonight with Mary J. Blige. Like, you okay. know what I mean? Just start swapping around. It's the night. We have okay. Mariah Carey with the Fugees. Like, just start swapping around for new, at least give the people something. So kind of like what Jay-Z did with R. Kelly. Yes. Yeah. That was a hell of a show in the garden that night. That's but, nice. um, yeah, we have just, uh, what city are we in? Bring them out. Yeah. Uh, but if Lauren could get it together, could stay on time, like, I don't know what the guy do to persuade her to do it. It would mm-hmm. be a great show to see. I would buy a ticket. If she make five shows in a row before she gets to New York and tickets are still available, I'll try it. I'll try it out. Do you think people still want to see the Fuji's? It's weird. Zion Live is still Zion Live. She may not have the same voice, but you want to see it just because you you connected with it. You remember when the song came out, but anybody born after you know the Twin Towers drop, they ain't trying to see that. You know, that's like no, yeah, yeah. and and nobody even cared about the Fuji if he was born in that '96 up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to you have to experience it. You have to know what it was. You have to live through the score. You know what I mean? The skits. It's hard to relate now. So was the show in Brooklyn free? I doubt it. Okay. I highly doubt it. Because I honestly didn't hear about it until after I heard they were going on tour. Yep. I didn't know. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know. It was, like, it was like a pop-up show. I'm like, this is yeah. like a pop-up show. You got to really kind of prepare a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I don't uh, know. Hopefully she keeps coming back. Yeah. So, Fat Joe. And, you know, Fat Joe has been on fire, man. You know, Yesterday's price, today's price. Not, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Yesterday's price, yesterday's is, not price, today's price, price. is not today's price. I need that. I still need that on the shirt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got to make that merch happen. But Fat Joe states that everybody is scared to go up against Busta Rhymes in the verses. What you think? As they should. Busta has some heavyweight hits. Like someone has to stand across. Like put your hands where my eyes can see. Mm. I don't know. Like it might be one, of, one or two songs that could stand up against it, but they don't have the remaining 19 tracks to stay here with you. Mm. Like Buster's is just that powerful of a being. Like uh, if they're willing to, you know, co-mingle, I think him and Missy might be a good one-on. Cause as far as being not around the same time frame, probably having the same amount of albums, um, Missy is a bit more talented. But I think Buster would make up with his show performance. So. I agree. That would be a good battle. I don't know where it would be, but that would be a good battle with them too. But outside of Buster, you know who might be a good sleeper? Juicy J. Okay. He got some shit he could pull from. Three Six got some bangers. He got a lot of personal hits, and he wrote a lot of things too. Mm-hmm. The fuck around and drop Dark Horse on you by Kelly, by by the uh, well, white girl. That's a, that might be a point, depending on what Buster got if he ran out of shit at the end of the tank. Mm-hmm. But um, nah. But any other. Rapper, it's hard to compete with Buster. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Um. Oh, I saw who else was arguing. Uh, did you see uh Diddy and uh yeah and uh, JD like um <laughs> your arms ain't long enough to box with God. Uh, like I was cold. He shouldn't. Have, he shouldn't have did JD. I know. I know. So I love. You know, brother love. I know his mm-hmm. love and shit. But he had to do JD like that. I feel like he kind of dragged him through the mud. And, and JD ain't no slouch, man. He got hits on hits on hits. You know what I mean? But. But Diddy might just out showmanship him if it ever does come yeah. down to it. Diddy's a, he's always been a scary competitor because he don't care who you think you are. He's just got that much confidence that I got hits before you. Mm-hmm. I got hits while you were hot. Mm-hmm. And I got hits after you fizzled out. It's kind of hard to go up against a dude like that. Now, for verses, like... Mm-hmm. But don't get me wrong, like Fat Joe p- played a big pun song that had nothing to do with him. Yeah. But it's a big pun. God rest, his, God rest his soul. But Puffy could do that with like 20 tracks that he's not even on. Yep. Does that count? Are we take al- that, take that. Is, is that like, <laughs> right? That's the, and that's on that. Like, you know what I mean? Because if, if he could just pull from anything he like touched the keys on in the back. That's kind of fake and possible. I know he, it'll have to be some, some rules and some parameters that they would have to stick to. <laughs> uh, and that's why he's a scary competitor. That's he true. has his hands on so many hits throughout at least, what, two decades? Mm-hmm. He might play some lock shit just because. He said, what? What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was, I still own him out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But 
let the locks go. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it would it would be nice to see him, but I would have to give it to Diddy just cause, just because it's Diddy. Like I know J- mm-hmm. and JD has the, he has the Arsenal to compete. I just think he's gonna lose. You know what? I think he's probably waiting because the locks went um, one twelve went. We know some artists can't go. God rest their souls. Little Kim, I think, is the only one who's still around that hasn't done it yet. Wait, done what? The verses. She's in the verses? No, she has not. I think what he's doing is he's waiting for every artist that was ever signed to Bad Boy to do the verses. So after that, he could come on and be the first person that every verses person <laughs> that came up used to work for me yeah and then drop the mic and yeah. be like, it's like he said he didn't even play a track <laughs> yeah he could do that oh, shit he got it mary gonna have to go like he, i don't know mm. so many people he could he could he could hold that that shadow over yeah would be dope to see though but um yeah, shit if jd just bring out janet he just drop the mic like <laughs> fuck that um, Yo, i don't know if p did he come back with j-lo it's a wrap if he pulled J Lo <laughs> and Ben Affleck all that, if he could pull J Lo just to walk across the stage and get, get I need a girl off, shit, yeah, you, yeah, you might have to give it to Diddy. Like, yeah, that, that boy good, that, that boy, that boy good. He, he pulled J, yeah. he pulled Jenny from a from a wild block to get over here. <laughs> like, yeah. Pulled her off of Ireland. Word, Yo, I need word. you to show up. Um, oh, another um, Drew, oh, what's that? Drew Hill. They're trying to they're trying to get in the versus ring too. Who could go against Drew Hill? Like. You know what I said from before, and then I went through they they album. They got hits. Mm-hmm. I forgot they got some hits, but I think one twelve could have did it if it was too late though. Yeah, one twelve would have been a good match. Yeah, one twelve and Jagged Edge went again. So yeah, I don't know. I'd have to go to like a nineties remix, nineties two thousands remix to see. Joe to see couldn't they couldn't they don't match up time wise, right? Nah, I don't know. They will, they will. Cause, cause energy, they might be on the same level, but just, I think it's just two different eras, and I don't yeah. think people be able to relate to it. Nope. Alright, well, whatever. We'll see what, the, we'll see what Swiss and Tim do. Mm-hmm. Um, well, some good news though uh, for the hip hop legend Scarface. Uh, after beating a COVID nineteen scare and fighting kidney failure, he was able to get a successful kidney transplant from his son. Uh, that's what's up, man. Yeah, Shouts to Scarface. Happy his son was healthy enough to be able to do that for him. Mm-hmm. That's the ultimate gift. Uh, it's like I had you for a reason, my boy. Like you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. super dope. But uh, happy he's be- on the on the better side of health, and I I wish him you know a speedy recovery. Yeah. That's what's up with him. Um, ah, uh, the nasty news. Uh, it's been a while, but uh, this might be uh one of those uh take it or leave it segments. Uh, mm-hmm. Kels is guilty, man. We talking about it? Nah. I ain't touching that one. Said, fuck <laughs> fuck <laughs> um, I ain't j- touching Kels. Jumping straight to music though. Um, <laughs> J Cole, did you hear his track uh, Heaven Heaven EP? No, it's J Cole. He's not whack. He's really good at what he does as far as putting words together. But uh, he touched on a lot of topics as far as almost feeling like uh, he's under. He might be underappreciated in the public eye from his perception. Mm-hmm. Like um, in the track he gave K Dot and Drake their flowers as being you know the one and two and him being him being third and you know he's like yo niggas threw the bronze at me. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like it was it was just cool to see his viewpoint on it. But then uh, immediately after. Drake ran up on him on stage, gave him his flowers, said, yo, he looked up to him as far as, you know, writing ability, but um, that track itself was really good to hear from him because he still got his finger on the pulse as far as being sharp, being witty, being introspective, and being able to deliver bars that a lot of current rappers just can't do. And yeah. the fact that you hear all his words is a bonus. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he's super clear when he do it, but uh, when you get a moment, hear that out. But he dropped it on SoundCloud because he dropped it over uh, one of Drake's beats that he had on the album. Okay. But uh, it was pretty dope. When you get a chance, you got to hear that. And um, lastly, uh, today, uh, Meek Mill's new album's out. Yeah. Of pain. Uh, obviously, we didn't get the hair yet. <laughs> but um, what are you looking for from Meek album in 2021? Um, I'm looking for him to actually slow slow down his thought process in his bar delivery. I know when he first came out, everything was just like, bow, bow, bow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, high energy, you know, high, you know, strong delivery. I'd like to, I like when he slows down his flow and really tells you the story. If you remember Tony's story, story, that shit was ill. Yeah, that was ill. 
Yeah, so I, I'm looking for, of course, the intro trend has to stay. I love that. Yeah. That's always been his thing. I think he should ride that train until he, you know, he retires. Um, I'm definitely looking for him to talk about, you know, um, the state of hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, and he looks like he's done a lot of growing. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing him talk about the new endeavors that he has, the new people he's hanging around. Because I know he did an interview where he was talking about for a minute, he was in the crib, and he wasn't really that motivated. And then Little Baby and them came through, and they was just knocking out song after song after song. Boy's hot. Yeah, and he was like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> like, I, gotta, like, I gotta step it up. Yeah, so he was like, the next time they came back, he was right with them. Like, nah, that's, that's good. But And he's good for the culture moving forward. Because he's so accepting of the new guys that are coming into yeah. the game. He has no ego about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's beautiful to see, man. Oh, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Can't wait to hear it, man. Uh, yeah. Expensive Pain. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like a good Kanye album, but um, Expensive <laughs> Pain uh, is out now in all your phones. Yeah. Um, I did see a cool little Nike ad last week. It mm -hmm. did throw me for a loop. Right. Um, it was Megan Thee Stallion. Looking beautiful as always. But, you know, she was just, um, I guess, uh, being pictured in separate, like, workout gear. Mm -hmm. Threw me for a loop. I was just like, she, I know she works out. I've seen the TikToks. wonder how much you got for this. You know what I'm saying? But um, shouts to the Stallion, man. Uh, more bags, more ads, more in your face. Keep it going. Um, mm -hmm. I ain't going to lie to I still ain't hear an album in its entirety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think her album... Her whole, whole album is for us. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's talking to the hotties, man. Ah, uh, yeah, she's right. I'm, 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 I'm the wash. I'm the washies. Like, yeah. I'm, not, yeah, I'm done. I am done. Yep. Oh, man. Ah, oh, sad news, man. Talk to me, man. Yeah, man. So, we want to take this time out the show to send a special R.I.P. to A.J. Johnson. Most of y'all probably know him as Ezel from Friday. Uh, he was also in Players Club. I got the hookup. Um, this brother was hilarious. He even did stand-up comedy. Uh, passed away early September at the age of 55, man. Mm, too young. Yeah, yeah, man. And a crazy thing in looking at the cast of from, from Friday. Tiny Lister. Pops, Bernie Mac, Yvette Wilson. She was the one who was the friend that supposedly looked like Janet Jackson. Yeah, yeah. And Ronaldo Ray, uh, he was the neighbor who kept saying, get off my grass. Damn. All of these guys, gone. Uh. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. That's right, man. Just pray for Chris Tucker and Ice Cube, man. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yo, oh, and, uh, yeah. Another news, sure. just make sure they... They get to that next uh, lap around the sun, but man, big shots to Ezel, man. Hey, Mr. AJ Johnson, my neck and my back forever. Yeah, man. <laughs> and I hope if we get that next Friday, I know they're working stuff out. I hope they do some special like tribute for them. In, they have to. The movie. They have to. Yeah. Um, something. I don't know if he got a son that look like him, sound like him, uh, joke like him. Right. Somebody got to get incorporated on his behalf. Absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody. But um. Couple sports titles, man. Yeah, let's start, get into are it. We start where it's hot. WNBA. Yeah, that's where it's hot, man. Might as well talk to me, man. So the girls, the the girls pooping. Yo, the ladies are showing out, man. Shout out, shout out to the fact that this is getting like mainstream coverage, like it deserves. You know what I mean? Finally. So there were some playing games: Chicago Sky versus Dallas. Uh, Kalia Copper, man, I, this girl is good. She's on the sky. She was just balling out. She was, oh man, like it was. She was the heart of that game. And of course, Candace Parker is elite fundamentals. She's she's a machine. Yeah, she's like she's like literally Tim Duncan slash. Like she's just Miss, Miss Fundamental. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're gonna call her now, Miss Fundamental. Like. If you're a female, or even a male, if you're learning how to play the game of basketball, period, watch her. you need to watch Candace Parker. Constant movement, everything is deliberate, is strategic, and it's to get everybody else involved, but to also utilize her skills to the best of her ability. You can tell why she is who she is, and to me, she's the ultimate teammate. 
Doc. Yeah. Always ready to pass the ball. Always ready to help out on defense. And she's she's the perfect player, though. She's Yo. she's there. That's for sure. And then the next playing game was crucial because Seattle Storm, they've been like running a league, man. That's Sue Bird. But then over on the Mercury, we got your girl who you picked. I mean, I mean, yeah. she ain't. But um, I'm gonna have to get the jersey, man. No, I don't blame I'm you. Have to get the jersey, man. I, I I'm think I'm gonna to. get the. See, it's tough for me now because now that I'm watching more and I'm seeing more players, I'm like, I'm gonna have to get a few jerseys. Like, right, <laughs> yeah, like I'm gonna have to get a few. Like right now, honestly, it's a toss up between Candace Parker and Kelsey Plum from the Aces. And I'm going to okay. talk about her a little later, but those are the two where it's a toss-up for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so now moving into the playoffs, man, Chicago Sky took on Connecticut Sun, who is the number one seed, and Chicago Sky, man, they got this guard, Vandersloot. Homegirl had a triple-double, which was only the second one in the history of WNBA, and had a record-breaking 18 assists. She was serving. What? It was like a two O T. She was just she was serving everybody. Yeah, yeah it was, that was, it was a good game. Like um, I haven't like don't get me wrong, but I haven't been like into a game game like that game in mm-hmm. a very long time. You know what I mean? Yo, because I was you. I was like I didn't have any stake in it. I didn't like bet on anybody. I didn't. I wasn't even really doing so much research up until the game. You know what I mean? But yeah. when I caught the end of it, I was like, oh, this is a game game. Uh-huh. It was super dope. It made me stop for a little bit. Yeah, and then um. The second, well, the Chicago Sky won that game, so that was big. And then the second game, Aces uh, versus the Phoenix Mercury, man. Raquana Williams and Kelsey Plum were showing out. Ooh. They were going back to back at each other. And we already know that Aces has Asia Wilson, who's phenomenal. Um, it was a great game, man. It was a great game. Uh, I believe the Aces pulled it out. Um, and the Aces also retired Becky Hammond's jersey a little bit um, before the playoffs started, so that was really cool. But let me tell you something. If you are not tuning in to the WNBA playoffs, you are missing out. These ladies are hooping. Hooping. Big time. <laughs> they are hooping. That's too soon uh, Too soon for you to predict, predict the uh, champion, do you think? I, I can't. I don't have enough stake in the game to do that. <laughs> yeah, I was nervous. Like, everybody like they had, like, a good yeah. shot at it. So, I don't even know. I'm just, yeah. You got to tune in. It's, it's no joke, man. Like, these these are good matchups. So, it's the semifinals. Uh, you know, whoever wins this, you know, goes to the finals out of these two different um, series. So, I'm just excited to see it, man, for mm-hmm. real. Nice. Should be interesting. Hell yeah. Um, switching over to the men's side of thing, man. Mm-hmm. Um, unlike the women who get right to the business, you know what I'm saying, playoffs is here, everybody's hand sharp. The NBA, man, we um, think about other stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know, Kyrie's um, – it's funny. I think – honestly, I think Kyrie is back there. I really think he is. <laughs> I just think he's fucking with He's niggas. just messing with people. He's fucking with niggas. <laughs> like, he's just keeping it, his information like, – and like he's totally right. Like my information is my information. It's none of your business what I do. Right. I'm telling myself. But um, I'm not sure if anyone's asked him like outright. Hey, are you vaccinated? I don't think anyone's asked him. Mm. He just keeps anything surrounding the topic. He kind of weaves away from it as if he's not interested in it. And I'm pretty sure he's not. But he's very, you know, my body, my thoughts, my option to talk to you at, at all moments. But um, when he shows up for the first game and Broadway is gonna be mad for him. Like, how's he? If he how? Got the shot. <laughs> I was like, yeah, nigga, I'm going to shoot the shot, too. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But Kyrie's funny, man. He, I think he just likes fucking with people. He's just an ultimate, like, millionaire troll. Like. <laughs> yeah, so there are some states who have, you know, strict mandates that you have to be vaccinated to practice or play in the city. So the question is, how big of an impact will these mandates have on the NBA season? It's going to be a few people that's going to keep their toes on the ground, just like I'm not doing it for whatever reason, but, you know, it's going to be theirs. But NBA ain't playing. They ain't going to pay you. You're going to have yeah. missed games. I don't know what kind of penalties they're going to enforce yet, but somebody will be the scapegoat who tries mm-hmm. to miss. You know, hopefully I hope the preseason is a good uh, warm-up to what will happen if you try to shit in the regular season. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So hopefully by the time season starts, everybody's on board and we're going to have a decent season. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, we we have to look at 
if you're an NBA player and you really love the game, what is your commitment to the team, right? If you're willing to say that, hey, listen, I'm not going to sacrifice my beliefs or what I'm putting into my body to take this risk, then fine, by all means. But if the commitment is to the team to winning, winning a championship and this is part of it, you got to make the commitment. You have to. You know, you yeah, got to make the I went commitment. to your team. Yeah. I'm not talking fans. I'm not talking like, you know what I mean? Not even coaches, of course, you know, um, they are trying to guide you on this on this journey. But your team, man, your blood, sweat, and tears, that's what, if they going to do it, you got to go through it with them. That's, that's the whole purpose of the battle. Yeah. So, mm. uh, to me, and then this goes back to the fans, right? Um, it's bad enough you have load management. Now you're going to have vax unvaccinated players who say, forget it, I I'm just won't play. And now it's like, you know, where's the product going to go, right? The product's going to be fine. There's always going to be another ball player out there who can come in and do your job. Like, we know that. Unfortunately, but true. You know what I mean? So we hope that it works out because there's a lot of players we really want to see. There's a lot of matchups we're looking forward to this season. So mm. I just hope these guys figure it out, man. They have to. They have to. So much money to line. They'll they'll miss a check or two. Like my bad, y'all. I was I was reading books, man. My bad, y'all. <laughs> it, like, it was definitely the wrong books. You I know hope what I mean? So. Where um, Kendrick Perkins, he had a he had a, a he had a statement. I want to run by you because I know mm-hmm. you're uh, you're a big basketball guy. But he said, but he said Draymond Green and Ben Simmons are basically almost the same player. Mm-hmm. Ben is just a bit more athletic version of Draymond. So usually. <laughs> Big Ken, <laughs> Big Perkins says a lot of crazy stuff, right? I actually agree with him on this. Get out. If you look at Ben Simmons' game and the way he plays, uh-huh. Draymond Green does the same thing. Draymond Green actually shoots better than Ben Simmons. You true. know what I mean? This like, is true. I'd rather Draymond take a game with a shot versus Ben. Like, if you gave Draymond Green Ben Simmons' build, He's probably an all he's probably an all star right now. Yeah. Like the star, superstar. Hmm. Cause with that build, now he can guard centers better. He already does a good job with some of the biggest centers in the league. You give him Ben Simmons height? Crazy? Like <laughs> I, never, I just thought it was blasphemy because I in my head I just know Ben is just like like like, like dumpster trash right now and Jay Mino. Yeah. Two, three-time champion. Uh, I'm not sure if he got a, a defensive player of the year, but I know he was up there in the voting. Mm. <sighs> I just didn't see it when he said it. It blew me, it blew me for a loop. Yeah. If you think about it, Draymond Green can literally play the point guard. He can uh-huh. literally play. He's not like a – like Ben Simmons isn't a great ball handler. Like he's not going to cross anybody mm. over. He's not coming down doing Damian Lillard and Steph Curry type shit. He's a basic player. Who's athletic, but he can't shoot for nothing. No. And if you look at his performance last year in the playoffs, uh, just there's no. no way that Draymond Green is doing what he did. No. You know no, what I mean? Not at all. But they basically are the same players, just that Draymond Green has a higher basketball IQ to me than Ben Simmons. Like you know what shook me like Draymond Green in my head, I, I have as a superstar in my head. Mm-hmm. Mainly because of his accolades, but you know his, he, he he demands something on the court that you have to respect and give to. Mm-hmm. Ben Simmons, he has the superstar name, but he's not a superstar to me. I don't nothing like what makes him a superstar. Right. So it's purely hype to me. Damn. Like even when he was in LSU, he, it's not like he was doing uh, anything that was like oh really my spectacular god. Spectacular then, yeah. Yeah, he just had a lot of hype behind him. And when he came to Philly, you know what I mean? It was like, all right, let's see what he does, right? And it was like, okay, let's give him a couple years in the league. They got Joel Embiid there. He can get a shot. He can work on it, mm-hmm. right? It's just, I think it's psychological with him. His face, sometimes on that court, looks like he doesn't want to be there. He looks confused a lot when I, when you do see him. He's just yeah. like, Not that he don't know the play, but just like, what? do I do now? Like, you know That's what I mean? What like, he's just like flustered or something. Yeah. There's a confidence level 
to anything mm-hmm. that you do, right? Like when you get a new design, something about your mind works in a way where it's like, oh, I'm going a, I'm to a kill this. Like mm-hmm. I got this. Mm-hmm. I don't see that in Ben Simmons when he's on the court. Nah, All like, the time, I should say. There's games where he looks like the guy you want him to be, but then most of the game. <laughs> yeah, like it's a, it's a numbers game. He's never on, yeah. the, on the good side of it. And that would piss anybody off. Correct, especially for the price tag on him. And especially when Joel is out there, knee hurting, elbow hurting, everything hurting. This guy don't even want to take point blank shots because he's having a bad game. Right, uh, I still can't believe that shit. But yeah, man. I don't know. Um, but I, I believe Ben is refusing to go back yeah. to the team. Yeah, he does not want to play. He wants to be traded. And this is what I'm talking about. The team hasn't got any offers for you that they want. Why not just go out there and ball? You know what I mean? Who knows? You may find a rhythm this year that you didn't find last year, and all of a sudden, everything is good. Mm -hmm. Like, they're trying to work with him. Like, oh, listen, we ain't getting no offers for you, so let's try and make this last season work. So you want to get in the locker room? Yeah. You know what I mean? But he's like, nope, I don't want to do it. And this this sends volumes to other teams because it's like, so if things get shaky here, are you going to do the same thing to us? I don't know. I don't think he gets picked up. Like, I, don't, wait, well, I don't know what kind of contract he has where he'd be forced to play for Philly or mm-hmm. something like that, but I don't know how. what team would benefit from having him on the roster. I think he got dubbed the next LeBron too quickly. That's what you think it is? Yeah, I think the height that they tried to give him didn't match the compa- performance. Yeah, comparing him to LeBron too quick, and then LeBron kind of like being, you know, like his, his, I guess his mentor Intensible. and yeah. stuff. Oh, like that's that. him. That's him. Yeah, it gave him. It probably gave him a pressure that he feels like he's not meeting up to, and that can fuck with your performance, man. <laughs> <sighs> hmm. I don't know. Um, I think he's gonna get Cam Newton. Like he's just. Mm. Cam still got Yeah, but that's a different. That's different. Cam did show out before he lost his job. That's different. <laughs> At least Cam got he had his moment. He made it to the mountaintop. He, got he just ain't cross over. Just ain't cross it. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I wish him well yeah. wherever he goes. Yeah, um, definitely. Oh, NFL man, Have you been watching uh, the Manor Brothers on Monday night? Oh my God, comedy gold, man. Like you know, you know, pay is funny. He has, he has that dry humor, but. Eli, man, he's a sneaky son of a bitch. Like, you know, you be forgetting he's funny on the low, too. Like, yeah. But they're doing really good with the, um, with the, they're going to take, I tell you, like, that whole stream cast, they're getting to invite people in. Mm-hmm. I don't know who has that Monday night gig, uh, but uh, <laughs> it's about to get swapped soon. Listen, the old heads are in danger. Those those guys, those guys you're used to sitting there with the mic, like, you know, welcome to Monday night. It's a wrap for that. It's a wrap for that. As soon as I saw Eli that. fifth the bird, I said, oh, oh, we lit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's, yeah, he's on man. it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it was funny because the, the last one they just did, they were making fun of um, Dak's warm-up where he's, like, doing the hip yeah, twist. Yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> twist. And Eli's like, see, you got to kind of do it like this, Peyton. Like, you got to close in your left shoulder, but then you got to open your left. And you got <laughs> and he's <laughs> like, look at the hips. It's like Shakira out here. Yeah, they mad funny <laughs> for no reason. Like, I had no idea Eli was that funny. I like, had no idea. I, growing up, I guess with Eli, like, it had to be <laughs> hilarious. Like, cause he doesn't even look funny. Like, yeah. you know what I'm <laughs> he is mad funny. It was hilarious, man. Oh, so I'm going to let you take this one, oh, man, we because um, we got Tom Brady. Tom, man. Big Tom's going back to little New England now. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he has to go see his, his, not his nemesis, his predecessor, his, uh, you know, his, his old boss. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He has to go see him face-to-face. I mean, Belichick, like, it's like, we know each other, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, we, 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 we've danced a lot. <laughs> No, but I got a new bitch with me now. You know what I'm saying? And now you got to respect. Now you got to respect this bitch with me. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So yeah. it's gonna be cool just to see uh, Bill's defensive mind have to go against Tom for real, like real time right. for once. But um, they know each other's tricks. So I'm curious to know who's gonna, who had the hidden sheet in the playbook that they right. didn't have. You know what I mean? But it should be interesting to see nonetheless. I, I think yeah. Tom comes out of New England victorious. 
uh, especially since he just lost in L.A. Um, I know mm. he was, I, that was his first time playing in L.A. Period. So um, I was, I know he was looking to get that dub. But no matter how good you are, man, your defense has to play with you as well. And unfortunately, Tampa couldn't do it last week. But uh, yeah. yeah, I'm curious to see him do it. But uh, I think Belichick and him will crumble, man. Tom left him, so it's <laughs> not the same. It's not the same. Absolutely, and they put a lot of hype on Mac Jones. Um, I think it's too much, too soon, and. Yeah. They signed Richard Sermon, the Buccaneers. That's another thing. Like, as soon as the defense got a little suspect, Richard Sherman was available all of a sudden. I was yeah, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, shit, Antonio's coming back. He ain't sick no more. Mm-hmm. Like, like they, they're they the Lakers of the NFL as far as, that's like, personnel. This is, got Gronk out there still running around, by the way. Evans is still out there deep. Pause. But, um... Yeah, good luck, New England. You won't win this week, but... Yeah, and then when they spoke to Richard Sermon, you know, he was very regretful about the July arrest. If a lot of you don't remember, there was a video of Richard trying to break into a door, and there was a gentleman that he was trying to get to. You remember his name? I know he was was screaming it. I don't uh, don't recall his name. Yeah, I I don't remember the name, but... Whoever he was trying to get to, was it was going to be blood. an issue. He was off of blood. If he it was going to be an issue, but he was very regretful, and he says that experience changed him. So um, we'll see, man. Um, all the best. Yeah, man. He, he'll, I think uh, he'll use this rebound as a good one. I think he'll he'll shine on the on the Buccaneers. But um, yeah, you just got to get through it, man. That's one way. You just show up every day and get through it. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, question for you. Lamar going into that uh, primetime game a couple of weeks back with Mahomes. He was 0-3. Mm-hmm. Finally got to beat him. How do you think he's they have been since that game individually? Because it seems like uh, Mahomes kind of not slowing down or mm-hmm. not that something's off, but something's different. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And with Lamar, it, feels, it seems like the shortcomings he had last year, like um, – they're working by, not I don't know if it's by uh, by hard work or just by pure luck, mm-hmm. but it seems to be working more for him this year. How, do you think that game affected their trajectory for the rest of the season? It remains to be seen. I mean, there's, they've only both played one game, I think, mm-hmm. since the loss. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's an interesting thing. When you're no longer on top, you can only go up, right? Very true. A couple of seasons ago, Lamar and the Ravens were it. Yes. You know, everybody was waiting for that Ravens Chiefs um collision mm-hmm. and I can't remember who even took him out before that could even happen. Yeah, it didn't work out. He, yeah. didn't, he didn't get the Right. So Lamar was like that guy. He was Patrick before Patrick became Patrick. Mm-hmm. And it just didn't work out and then he had that, you know, that whole straight like shot down like it was just a, a crazy decline winning this game if it does do something for him psychologically like finally i got something over mahomes right mm-hmm. you know what i mean that's great for him mahomes now i think the chiefs just gotta tighten up that defense there's too much on him yeah there's like way too much on him like i feel like he's putting in the old um aaron Rodgers uh slot a couple of years back where yeah Aaron had to put 30 up just to win the game That's every right. week out. You know what I mean? And that, and that was rough for him for a little bit. Yeah. So we'll see how it works out. Yeah, because for me, Mahomes gives me Allen Iverson vibes. When Allen came in the league, he was a showman. He had tricks. He was mm-hmm. new energy. He was a vibe. It, it's different swagger, but he hit the league in a way they weren't prepared for. Very true. The minute the league started getting used to him, Shit, they created rules because of him. No, I go when you're too good. We gotta change the rule book. Right, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> they that wasn't what they wanted, right? You know what I'm saying? So they literally every team started preparing for Allen differently. Mm-hmm. Every team in the NFL said, "You know what? Let's just score more points." Than them. Their defense ain't gonna stop us. Nah. You know what I mean? They are not gonna stop us. But our defense is good, and we're going to put him on skates all night. <laughs> should, should be, it's been working. Yeah. It's been working. Yep. Like, um, like, I would love to see the amount of scramble time he has so far this year. It's only three games in. Think it's up from last? 
I think so. Because mm. they know that offensive line sucks. Like, uh, the scary thing about um, having a surprise year is you only, you only can have one of them. Which, uh, like, even with Lamar, like, you know, have the game. Like, oh, God, he's just so fast. Mm-hmm. How do we defend the option? After the season or two, like, we got film on you. We kind of yep. – we start to see a little bit of the tendencies that you might have had over the last two years. Right. You know, your tendencies are hard to be breaking. Like he always looks, to, like he always puts his mouth these in when it's an actual run. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like shit like that. You know what I mean? You start to notice stuff like that, but mm-hmm. you only have that surprise once. Yeah. People, people kind of know your playbook now, so you gotta, yeah. you gotta reinvent the wheel. On both yeah. ends, Lamar yeah, and, and plus these cornerbacks are tired of made being made a fool of. You know, by the I way, mean? you know what I mean. Like everybody trying to be prime so I was like, I can't do it. Yeah. Getting, getting <laughs> these perfect passes on goddamn yeah, day. Yeah, well, hell yeah. That's yep. a fact. That is yeah, a fact. Um, and then a special, special appreciation since we're talking about the Ravens. Uh, before their Sunday night football game on September nineteenth, they did pay homage to the late Omar. Um, they played the Omar whistle. Oh, from The Wire. Yeah, from The Wire. So they paid um, homage to Michael K. Williams and his character Omar from The Wire, his famous whistle when he's walking through the neighborhood and everybody's running in the house because they don't want to get robbed. Word. That's <laughs> mad funny. I got to rewatch. I got I to gotta rewatch that scene. I know. Yeah, man. I started to the other day. Yep. Hmm. Um, John Jones can't get it right over there in the uh, UFC division, man. What's going on? Listen, and this is hard for me. (laughs) This is hard for me because I'm a John Jones fan. There was a time where I literally was putting John Jones in the same sentence as Floyd Mayweather Mm. as being the best pound for pound fighter. Wasn't undefeated, but definitely nobody was whooping his ass in the last couple years. Yeah. Yeah. When you talk, when you look at the chronicle history of this fella since 2000, maybe 2000, what is it, 2015, mm-hmm. it's like a decline, straight decline of instances, interactions, substance abuse, where it's like, what's wrong that you just can't, you know, live a straight, comfortable life, mm-hmm. you know, and in this, um, in this situation here he allegedly pulled a woman's hair head butted a police officer and it it led to his arrest and now he's got he injured somebody tampering with the vehicle head butted a police car i don't know what you win from doing that he's got top-notch coke in his possession you know what i'm saying and then you know like i it's it's hard to talk about right now, as you can see, because I I can't put the pieces together as to why you feel like you have to do this I stuff. I'm just I'm I can't wait for his thirty for thirty, but I just want to know where it went wrong. Yeah, like I know you had the one running, uh, the one brushing with the law or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, pow pow, don't do that no more. But how many times you want to see if the stove is hot, bro? Yeah, like, like he just keeps like how many times you want to test these waters, and like, he yeah. won't. I don't. No, no, you can't, you can't bounce back if you're in jail. No, <laughs> you can't do it. No, he just, he just keeps having these run-ins, and so the best part about it, right? With looking at the history, DC called this shit in an interview before they fought in UFC. Well, so we're supposed to fight in UFC 200, and he said this brother has a constant history of destroying himself. And as I he's he's talking about as I look around at his PR, you know what I'm saying, his public rep, I know that in her mind she knows that at any moment he's going to implode. And he's going to risk everything that she's gonna to have to cover up. I can see it in her eyes that she already knows that he's a danger to himself. And literally right after that, he ended up testing positive in the anti doping program. Like they call and, and it. He he, DC called it, and to to DC has always been like a actual fan of John Jones. Yeah. Like he's like, if I'm gonna beat you, I want to beat you straight up. Like no substance abuse, no disqualifications. Mm-hmm. Like let's fight, let's really make it happen. He respects John, but John can't get out of his own way. And DC to this day is like, yo, the brother is just he's self-destructive. 
Okay. It's like nobody wants to help them. Like, it's like your circle, you got to at some point look around and be like, are you guys helping or hurting? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if nobody wants to help, like you got to just burn the whole house down and start over. Like, yeah, man. Whether it be rehab and new location, something got to give. But he can't continue to throw his life away. So all the haters, all the UFC haters, all his nemesis, they hit Twitter hard. Oh, they man. hit Twitter hard and they hit Twitter funny. And, you know, you had um, Adesanya, you had um, the the current um, middleweight, no, heavyweight champion. They were all just going at him like, you know, all that talk. And <laughs> my man can't stay out of trouble. Now, you know what I mean? This is, this is just more it's, issues. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's tough. It's tough, man. You can't, he, like you just said, he can't stay out his own way. Yeah. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to get up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, um, what else was that? Um... You got anything going on before the next show? Uh, outside of boxing, man, Wilder versus Fury. Uh, this will be the third match, I believe. Yeah, the third time they're fighting. Mm. Uh, as we know last time, man, Wilder, them knees was weak, man. He tried uh, to blame uh, it on the suit he wore on the walkout. <laughs> hey, man, any excuse I could use <laughs> to hopefully get a rematch for a couple bucks. Yeah, so, um, but they're going, to, that's going down October 9th. So I will be tuned in because unless unless Deontay did some real game changing approach to his his fighting scheme, his build, yeah. I don't know what's gonna change, yeah, man. I don't, I don't see another result. I didn't hear from swapping camps or anything like that, so uh, I hate for it to be a repeat, but we gotta we gotta tune in to see. Yeah, Pay per view? Of course. You know, they ain't gonna be free. <laughs> gotta, gotta get my five stick up and running. <laughs> yeah man other than that that's it for me though what about you um i'm trying to i don't know what it is but i got i guess i gotta check it out i've been seeing a lot of bullshit on tv uh netflix uh squid games or squid yeah i saw about that. i don't know what it's about they say it's a horror kind of show i don't know what a horror show is but <laughs> i'm gonna I'm see if i can try to catch up before the next show i'm curious i'm just curious at this point because it keeps crossing my feed yeah i gotta see what that's about but uh, outside of that, just working. Like regular shit, you know yeah, what I mean? Another yeah. couple of weeks, waiting for the next payday. You know the vibes. That's <laughs> always good, man. That's always good. Oh, man. So anything else? Or I'm good, right Broski. I'm yeah, good today. Man. All right, so it's that time of the show, and unfortunately, we got to say bye to y'all. But we thank y'all for stopping by, man. We hope that you enjoyed the show, and you are now released back into your regularly scheduled programming. Corporate life, parental life entrepreneurship, anything that you do, we salute you. I'm Senor Lee. King Kaepernick over here. See you back next pay week when we lock back in to a free state of mind. Yeah. (laughs)